Welcome to our module on capital budgeting. So this module is um, maybe belongs more in a corporate finance class. It's the last module in most managerial accounting courses, most intro managerial accounting classes. And I think it's meant to kind of set the table for corporate finance. Uh, and this would be weeks and weeks and weeks in a corporate finance class. And we kind of attempted to do it in the last chapter. I always feel like it's a bit of a tacked on chapter and, and it's a lot of material. So I, I just want to you to know that as I, as I tackle this, I'm doing it in a very beginner's way and a very light way. And, and I would expect most of you will continue on and do a corporate finance course and you'll go much more into depth on each of these concepts. But these are the three concepts I'm hoping to cover in our capital budgeting unit together. So we'll look at payback period, we'll look at net present value, and we'll look at internal rate of return. And we'll just do a couple of problems that kind of explore them again on a fairly basic level. So I wanted to give you an idea of what in this video, before we get to the problems, what capital budgeting is. And it's just like when a company's planning to make a big investment or a big purchase, right? They're planning to buy a big asset, uh, kind of what thought process should go into it. And the challenge with these big purchases is that they're generally an asset that you're gonna use for many, many years. And so you have to make projections and estimates. But the other thing that's a major factor here is that if I'm saying, oh, I'm gonna use this asset for 10 years and you know, in year eight, say, just picking a number out of the year, this asset's gonna help generate $10,000 in profit for me. Well, $10,000 eight years from now is worth a lot less to me than $10,000 today. There's this thing called the time value of money, right? A dollar today is worth more than a dollar in 10 years. And so at the heart of capital budgeting is this concept of the time value of money. Well, in fact, in our first one, uh, simple payback period or cash payback period, time value of money isn't gonna come into play. So I'm just gonna, off the top of my head here, come up with a fairly simplistic example. So I'm gonna say, okay, I'm thinking of buying a $100,000 machine and I expect that machine uh, to uh, increase my operating income by $25,000 per year for five years. And so you can see that, you know, it's gonna generate, and we'll, we'll assume that's generating cash flows of 25 grand a year for the next five years for me. And you can look at that and say, well, it's a hundred grand machine, 25 grand a year for five years, 25 times five, that's 125,000, right? 25 times five, 125K. And you might say, well, this is fantastic, right? It's making me 25 grand. Uh, I should do it, but not so fast because of the time value of money and the fact that we're tying up $100,000 of our money. We could invest it elsewhere. We could do something else with that money. Uh, it might not be a good decision, and that's what net present value calculations get at. But I, I had said we'd start with payback period, so let's start with payback period. Um, to compute a payback period is fairly straightforward. You sort of look at the positive cash flows generated and the initial investment for the asset. And all you do is you say, okay, it's a $100,000 asset, whatever your investment happens to be at the start, you divide by the recurring cash flows, so that's 25 grand per year, and you say, oh, look at that. In four years, this thing will have paid for itself, right? If it generates 25 grand a year, it costs me 100 grand. In four years, the thing's paid for itself. Now, this calculation does not take into account that time value of money thing. It just sort of says, simple calculation. How much did you invest? How many years is it going to take to pay back what your investment was? And I think this is actually really a useful calculation for what I would call back of the napkin math. You know, you're, you're just in the early planning phases and you're saying, how many years is it till this thing pays itself off? Uh, not nearly as good as net present value or internal rate of return, uh, but good back of the napkin math. If you're just looking to kind of ballpark some decision, uh, I think payback period is, is reasonable. And so that's the payback period kind of put in simple terms.
terms, I guess. Uh, for this same machine, now we're going to look at the net present value. And to do a net present value, you need a little bit more information. You need to know something called the required rate of return. This can also be called the discount rate. And there's, there's all sorts of other lingo uh, used for, for this type of uh, percentage that we're going to come up with. Um, basically, it's saying, hey, I'm going to tie up $100,000 of my money uh, to buy this machine. I'm going to tie it up for a number of years. What would happen? Let's just pretend we don't have the money right now, so we have to borrow it from the bank. Well, what percentage is the bank going to charge me on the money? Because I should consider that as part of my investment. The fact that I got to pay the bank back this interest, the fact that borrowing money or tying up my own money has a cost associated with it. What's the cost? Well, generally, we consider that the, the cost that we could borrow money at. So let's say this company's discount rate, the, the cost of borrowing for them is 10%, for example. Um, obviously, whatever profit we make from this deal, we want to beat 10% because if we're not beating 10%, we're not beating our borrowing costs, right? And so we need to consider that in our investment decision. It's not just as simple as saying, oh, it's $100,000 I invest in the machine and $25,000 a year gets spit back at me. No, 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 it's, it's more to it than that. And that's what this uh, required a rate of return or discount rate is all about. I might, I might be misusing required rate of return. I'm not a corporate finance expert, but I would say discount rate or, or certainly borrowing cost are, are definitely appropriate to use here. Required rate of return might be something slightly different. Maybe I'm, I'm misspeaking. Uh, some corporate finance wizard can chime in in the comments and tell me why I'm off or why I'm not off on that one. Okay, so let's figure that out for this machine. Now let's figure out the net present value. And here's how the net present value works. We have this, uh, it's easiest to look at net present value in terms of like a timeline. So uh, year zero, like right now, I'm expected to spend $100,000. $100,000 in negative cash flow right now. Year one, I get positive 25. Uh, year two, positive 25. Year three, positive 25. Year four, positive 25. And year five, positive 25. And we didn't discuss it, but theoretically, if I could sell the machine after five years, I would put that positive cash flow in there under year five as well. But let's just assume the machine's not going to be sold. It's going to be scrapped and replaced with a new machine. We're not going to make any money off of it. Okay, so there's the situation. Now, the reality is I need to figure out, so the $100,000, negative $100,000, that's money leaving my pocket today, right? I need to figure out the present value of all of these cash flows. I need to figure out what $25,000, sorry, my handwriting always goes uh, what $25,000 is worth uh, the five years from now, $25,000, what is that worth today? How do I do it? Well, I use my discount rate. So let's look at year one cash flow, right? Year one, I'm going to get $25,000, but that's a year from now. How do I figure out what that's worth today? Well, you go one, whoops, one plus the interest rate to the power of however many years away it is. So I'll put N there. So 25,000 divided by one plus the interest rate. Our interest rate is 10% or our discount rate is 10%, 1.1. And that's all raised to the power of one. So it's 25,000 into the power of one is just its own self. 25,000 divided by 1.1, 1 .1, 25,000 divided by 1.1. I'll pull up my calculator here is 25 divided by 1.1 1 .1, 22727 okay 22727 so that's positive right that's that's good for me uh year two 25,000 divided by one plus uh well 1.1 1 .1 to the power of two and we're just going to continue on do this for years three, four, and five. Now, there is 
a more fancy formula, present value of an annuity, it's called. This is an annuity. If you just keep uh, compute the present value of an annuity, you can Google that formula and you can come up with this. I'm just going to do it a year at a time here just to show you each year kind of how they work individually. But PV of an annuity, if you just Google that, you'll be all set. So let me crunch the number here. Uh, 25,000. Oh, let's do the denominator first. 1.1 1 .1, uh, raised to the power of 2. Oh my goodness, I don't know how to use this calculator. I'll just go 1.1 1 .1 times 1.1. 1 .1. There we go, 1.21. So 25,000 divided by 1.21. I'm going to be in trouble when I get to bigger numbers here. 20661. 20661. A okay, year three, 25,000 divided by 1.1 1. 1 raised to the power of three. So 1.1 1. 1 cubed. Uh, this is going to be real shameful. I don't know how to use this calculator properly. I would normally do this in Excel. Um, Hmm, can I get some more scientific? Ah, there we go. This is going to be good. Ah, beautiful. <laughs> a miracle occurred. I actually troubleshot it live on screen. So use this X to the Y button and 3. Okay, 1.331. So 25,000 divided by 1.331. 25,000 divided by 1.331 is... 1873, 18783, pardon me, 1873. We'll do uh, year four. 25,000 divided by 1.1 raised to the power of four. Again, grab that calculator. 25, no, I, ah, I could do it all on the calculator here. Where's the clear button? Sheesh, I had escape. How about that? Uh, 20, no, I, I want to do 1.1 1. 1 raised to the power of 4. 1.4641. 1. Okay, so 25,000 divided by that number. 1.4641, 1. 1, I think. 17075. And year 5. 25,000 divided by 1.1 1. 1 to the fifth. Where are we here? Come on, calculator. 25,000 divided by, I wonder if I, this will work. If I just go 1.1 1. 1, y to the x, 5. That's a much better way to do it. 15, 5, 23. I just want to double check the last one, make sure I didn't transpose a number. Uh, 25,000 divided by 1.1 1. 1, uh, raised to the power of 4. 17. Oh, look at that. I did it right. Okay. So we've done now the present value of all those future cash flows, right? We're getting all these plus 25,000s in, but we know because they happened a year from now and two years from now and three years from now, they're not worth the same as $25,000 today. How much are all of those future cash flows worth to me? They're all positive, right? They're all good for me to have be saving 25 grand a year or to have 25 grand in, in cash flow being generated uh, per year. Uh, what is it worth to me? Well, let's add them all up. Let's sum up this uh, list of numbers. So 22727 plus 2661 plus 18783 plus 17. 075 plus 15523 equals 94769. Okay, so let's look at the uh, whole of this situation. I'm looking at buying a hundred thousand dollar machine, it's going to cost me a hundred thousand dollars today. The value of the cash flow it's generating is 94,000 bucks. Should I buy the machine? No way, right. I'm spending $100,000 today to generate cash flow that are worth today $94,769. $100,000 going out, $94,000 coming back. I'm not a finance genius, but even I can tell you that ain't a good idea. So minus $100,000 means we're $52,31 worse off if we do the deal. 
The last thing I want to leave you with, uh, but uh, we'll look at IRR in future videos because this video has gone on long enough. Uh, the last thing I want to leave you with in this video, though, is just the reality that most times when companies are doing this type of thing, it is speculation, right? It is guesswork. Yes, they can, you know, come up with their discount number for sure. But, you know, who's to say if this is going to generate $25,000 in cash flows three years from now? We don't know. That's that's our best guess, right? It's our best estimate. And so if, if our estimates are off, the whole thing just falls apart. So my advice to you is, is you know, you really want to scrutinize the estimates because, you know, if you're in a situation where you're making this type of decision, the data underlying it really matters. So if somebody's telling you, oh, six years from now, this is going to generate 25 grand a year, that's what needs to be scrutinized. Scrutinized. The math is not that complicated. The, uh, how they come up with the estimates is, and that's really where, where, you know, the devil is in those details. So hopefully this video is helpful to you in better understanding net present value and payback period. We'll do some problems on that and we'll also look at internal rate of return. Okay, bye for now.